Hey, good morning. Sergeant Gordon this morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Red Officer Fire Department, Station 1, South Folk Street. And we're going to show you a little, a little tour of the truck and our equipment and how I get my day started when I get here in the morning uh, from Engine 1. Engine 1, A1 pumper, 1,000 gallons of water. But, but before I get started, I want to make sure all my equipment is right and ready for my day. So what I do, I come to the cab, I check my radio, like the one I have with the radio strap, I check and see if they got good batteries. I check all uh, the other firefighters, the, uh, the lieutenant and the driver that sits in the rear. We all need radio, we need communication. So I check batteries on that. I check the cab, and if we have any type of incident we might have today, hopefully a structure fire or some type of uh, hazard material, you want to check our bottles. So we have air packs. We have five air packs. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have five, <coughs> four in the rear, and one for the lieutenant. When I do come in the morning, I check and see if they're adequate air pressure. I take my bottle out and I check, I turn it on. Make sure I get it on and make sure it's sealed. Turn off my air. And what I want to listen to, I want to listen to this. That is my personal alert safety system. That's my pass device. Once I know that it's good, I got air, I got 4,500 PSI, my bottles filled, I check all the other bottles, check to see if they got adequate air pressure, and we good. I come in, I check my flashlights, all the equipment on board, check for my gloves, for my PPE, check my coat, coat lights, then I do me a visual, Walk around inspection. I check the others because we on a shift today and it is B shift. A shift was on yesterday. So we would like to try to relate and try to make sure we know that whatever shift have at muster, let them know that we we know we had this going on. But you also you want to do your own walk around inspection and check. Check out the compartments if, if nothing got left yesterday on scene somewhere. Check all your appliances, check your nozzles, check your inductors, check all your bottle storage, keep bottle storage for extra air. Got two on the driver's side. They all at 4,500. Check for our extra Marlowe's, is what, our, what we call our hotel packs, our mall packs go inside, mostly the high-rise buildings, and we use this stuff. We got a lot of other stuff that we, we take with us that goes along with this. Don't forget this bag, because you're going you're gonna to need it. It has your wide-off wide off gate, and it has other spanner wrenches. Those that we tighten up our couplings, so we don't have an extra leak. You want to, we using our hoses, we want to make sure that we got tight enough grip and tight enough couplings so that we keep Good water pressure. So we check that, check our bag out. See if nothing they got left anywhere. Hope we got it going too fast for you. Check our life safety rope. We got life safety rope in case there. We got 200 feet of rope in case we need to hoist up tools, in case we need to maybe actually have to have a, a rescue. And we might need this to maybe help uh, drag someone out. Hopefully, we won't have to use it. But we got it just in case. All right, walk around to all the compartments. This compartment, you gotta have your rehab. You gotta have your water, you gotta stay hydrated. You get a little hot on these days, these summer days. Right now, it's getting a little bit a little cool, but you still wanna stay hydrated. Air nozzles. Shovels.
flat head axe. We use that for breaking glass. We use it maybe to get in inside of any inside any kind of structure that we need that you know as an extra tool to use. That's one of our cutting tools. Got our Halligan. This is also the prying tool. We use this. We can use this for breaking glass. We can also use this to pry. You have a, a smooth end, a curve end, like, like a crowbar. And you had your bevel end and your flat end. You can use, we can also use this. Also, it's good to use when we're doing forced entry on the door. Use these tools together. These works together. Bring them in together. And your backup firefighter hold this, and someone strike with this, and we use them to force entry on, on doors. All right? Check and see if we got those. And our shovels. We're coming around and put those back up so we don't use, leave those out. You don't want to create no, no tripping hazards. All right, let's move around to the rear of the compartment. This is the rear truck. We have a thousand feet of five inch holes we use for supply line. And we have, we have two attack lines, which we call them tail lines. You have a driver side tail line and you have a passenger side tail line. They also, they'll come, well, well we call them pre-connects. We call them pre-connects because they're already pre-connected. Nozzle is already applied on, on your hose. So what you have to do is grab this loop, grab this nozzle, and head to the door. In this compartment, this is our rescue tools compartment. This is what we call the jaws of life. This is what we actually use to open up doors, to cut hinges off of cars. These are very, very handy. We used to have the ones that used to have a lot of holes to it, but now they're battery operated. So now, cut it on. And we operate it, flip it either way. Use these on rescue, use these on accidents. In case the car is kind of banged up, mangled up a little bit, and if somebody needs to get out, we can use this to force our way in to get that door off, get it out the way, get in, get an EMT personnel inside, check on the patient. If they're hoping this, if they're trapped, it's the only time we'll want to use is doing entrapment. Moving around along, right along. Okay, in this compartment, you know what? Fire engines have ladders. I know everybody get excited about where are the ladders? Where are the ladders? Ladders come in a tunnel compartment to the rear of the truck. We have a, 20, a 24 foot. We have an extension ladder. It comes with two sections. It comes with a bed section and it comes with a standing section with um, foot, rest, foot heels and has a tip. We use these ladders because you want to get up on the second floor or anything that a, something that you can't reach. 14 foot is good. We got some go up to 35 foot. This is a 24 foot, 24 foot ladder. Once you deploy it, You deploy it, you got your halyard, which is going to be lifted up. Basically, you, you can use two people, and once you get it up, and tie it off.
and back on. This is our roof ladder. This is a 14 foot roof ladder. This is a single man carry, a uh, single ladder. Put it on top of the roof, they go together. The extension ladder and the roof ladder goes together. We have locks. These are your roof hooks. Once the roof hooks are in, on the top of the roof, where the roof comes in at the peak, you want to get those, roof, those hooks over the, over the edge and pull back so they can lock. When you're working on the ladder, you want to work on the ladder. You want to stay on the ladder when you're working on the roof. All right. All right, we got one more ladder to show, and then I'll show you the other side. We have a 10-foot attic ladder or a folding ladder. It didn't even look like a ladder, I bet, when you first saw it. It looks like that. But once you, you deploy it, turn it over, flip it up, hit it up, make sure it's level, and now you can climb. You can climb, that is, your, that is your 10 foot attic ladder or folding ladder. Make sure it's folded. I bet you didn't even know it. It looked like a ladder, but you can get it in tight spaces and open the roof access or the ceiling access inside your house works perfect. And get in and you can check for extension. Put that back. All right, these are pipe poles. Got a Got a 10 foot, 6 foot, and a, a 12 foot, 10, and 6. Ten, six. Use these. These are pushing, sealing, pulling. Whatever you want to, you want to pull. You want to pull away, pull away. Be sure you got a good access to the to the back of you or something that way you can get out in case you need to. You pull the ceiling, nothing don't come down with you, come down on you. All right, these are five inch panel wrenches. These are for those big, these are for those big lines. Pretty big, connect couplings with, take them off quickly. When they pressurize, you get a little pressurized, you're gonna be able to just come there and just pop a lot like that. You're gonna need something else, some tool to help you with. Let's move around. Check this compartment, which is our extinguisher compartment, fire extinguishers. We got a CO2, it's right, right there. Don't take too much to understand that, it's a CO2. Make sure you check your date on it. Make sure it has been tested. Date is on there. These your, your water extinguisher for small fire. You might not have nothing too big, so if you get a small fire, you can use one of these, the dry chemical, your water extinguisher, and your CO2. The chainsaw, you know, in bad weather, you're gonna need chainsaw. You got a lot of rough weather going on at this time. We're going and, and we're using a chainsaw. Make sure it has fuel in it, make sure it has oil. So I come in and I check. I come in and check. Check for my fuel, check for my, my bar oil, which is my chain oil. Let's keep this lubricated, get the chain lubricated. And you wanna, you wanna start it? I can start it for you. Make sure it's in off position. Make sure it's in your lock position. 
Call it a break. Call it a break. Check that in the morning. Check that in the morning to see if it's running right. I might have to use that on the roof. You can see there are a lot of outlets, a lot of things that we're that you're making now come battery operated. Doesn't come with a lot of hoses anymore, so we use a lot of batteries now. We use you, know, you get 24 hours. These battery lasts a good little while. And we got we got one here, uh, one there, and also the one that's on our rescue tools. Just like our tail lines in the back, these are cross legs. We have two cross legs. We have a, a, a rear, a rear in the front. They also come pre-connect. They already have the nozzle and you have your loop. Only thing you gotta do is just pull it and go. All right. That's the other side of the truck. Firefighter sits at. And this is where the lieutenant, this is the guy who sits here who calls, calls the shots, who directs everything back to the 911 center, back to dispatch. We also, we have here, this truck has USB plugs. We have a cash system. Cash system is tied with 911 center. Up here, if there was a call for us, what she'll do, she'll load it on our cash system. We get all the pre-information right here. One thing you need to know, let me get my truck started. Get your truck started, check your gauges. Check for your fuel, fuel gauge. Check your air pressure, uh, your depth fluid. It's been so much five on scene. We'll be out of the EMS. Your oil pressure. Yeah, Make sure all that comes on. Make sure your light comes on. Make sure your sirens work. Make sure your mechanical siren work. Your air horn work. And I can also stop that. I have a siren break that I can stop that noise. And getting water, you want to make sure your pump work. I make sure my pump work, got my PTO turned on. Come here, take the pump. I have a thousand gallons on here. Watching this gauge. That sound that you hear, that's the pressure rising. Watching that gauge. Coming through. Dispatch to engine four, engine two, engine one, truck two, take one, be around to a fire alarm at 210, 210, West Brentford Avenue, off of North Oak Street in North Patterson. We gotta go. General five, Mark Residence, Private Patch Clear, 1047. We gotta go, that's a call for us.